Okay guys, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our Ziploc baggie here and just flip it inside out. Uh, now the reason we're doing this is we're going to use our baggie as a mixing surface and then later on we're going to uh, put our silicone mixture inside the baggie and uh, use the baggie to apply our mixture into the mold. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is just get our felt material and our mold and just cut out a, uh, a shape of felt roughly the size of our mold here. Now the reason we're using um, felt is silicone once it's dried does not adhere to anything basically. Uh, you can't glue it to anything. It's really slick and so it only sticks to stuff while it's drying so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our silicone inside of our mold and then uh, after we've applied all, all of our silicone mix mixture excuse me uh, into our mold we're gonna put the felt over the top of it and just press uh, the felt down in onto the silicone so that the uh, silicone will stick stick to the back of our felt and that way we can glue felt to stuff obviously the final thing I think to prepare before we start making our mixture is just to go ahead and um, use your lubricant here to uh, spray it onto your mold so I'll just go ahead and spray like a gentle amount you don't want it to be like sopping wet or like any puddles like small puddles formed but you just want to coat the whole thing in silicone for sure <coughs> okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and put on my uh, my uh, mask here I'm just gonna take my caulk gun and I have my silicone in it and I'm just gonna start applying a couple squeezes of the caulk gun to, you want to put it in the corner or near the corner of your bag if possible uh, because we're gonna flip our bag inside out later on and I'm gonna go ahead and color uh, my silicone I recommend doing this before you put your cornstarch in so it doesn't start to harden now something to keep in mind is um, I'm about to mix the paint into my silicone but something to keep in mind is uh, the initial hue of just the silicone and the paint is going to be a lot darker uh, than what it will be after I mix in my cornstarch because the cornstarch is white color in color so it makes it a lot lighter once you mix it in. Alright, that looks about good. Okay, now we're going to actually apply our cornstarch here. So I don't have exact recommendations um, for how much, I mean the ratio of how much cornstarch to silicone. But I, I've heard that about one part cornstarch to three parts silicone is a good mix. But just make sure that you don't have clumps of cornstarch. That's uh, that's gonna be bad because certain areas will dry more quickly than other areas, and you don't want that. Just make sure there's no white powder left, and as you can see around the edges, there's still some left. So I'm just gonna take a cloth and just wipe this off real fast. So I'll try and mix in the last of it. And then I'm going to bring it all to the corner here. Like so. I'm probably not the greatest example. I forgot to wear gloves. So one tip I have for you guys is uh, take a scoop of your silicone and set it off to the side on your popsicle stick when you're done mixing. Uh, that way you can see how hardened your mixture is and you can kind of get an idea of when you need to pull your darts out of the mold. Now I'm just going to take my bag and grab it from the inside and flip it.
This is my favorite method of applying it. Uh, I used to just try and apply it with a popsicle stick directly to the mold, but I found using a Ziploc baggie is really good. You won't have any bubbles in your finished mold, and it just they look amazing. Like it looks exactly like the shape of the mold. It's incredible. So yeah, I'm just gonna push all my silicone to the to uh, the corner of the bag here. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to snip off the corner. Now, you don't want to make the hole too big so you can kind of have precision, but you don't want to make it too small. I would say about an eighth of an inch uh, hole at the corner is good. Now, hopefully you can see this on camera. I'm just going to take my bag, squeeze, and you just want to get, you want to make sure you get the uh, base really filled with silicone. And if you do that properly, you won't have any bubbles. So, just kind of spin it around, I guess, and fill it all the way to the top. You don't want it overflowing, but you want enough that you know the whole space will be filled. Okay? So, I filled all three of them. And I might put a little more on this one just to make sure and that one too. Okay. Now the final step, I'm going to take that little piece of felt I cut earlier and I'll just place it over my mold and press down over the three molds I have there. So now we're just going to have to wait two hours or so. Uh, again, you can check how far along it is by using the stick you set aside with the, the bit of mixture you have on it. And so, I'll cut to that next segment when we have our dried dart heads. Okay guys, I have some dried gumdrop heads here. And as you can see, see they're still uh, attached to their felt backing. So one thing worth mentioning is they might stick a little bit, even though we use lubricant uh, in the mold. And they're going to stretch when you pull them out. And they might even stretch to a good three quarters of an inch or so. But don't worry about it. Just pull them. They'll snap right back into place as soon as they get out of the mold. Okay, so our last step is just to take our hollow punch tool and a mallet or hammer. I definitely recommend a plastic mallet. And then just go ahead and tap our heads off of the foam. Now, it's kind of weird, but I haven't had very good success trying to tap out my my dart heads on hard surfaces so I've had best success I'm able to hit them out with just a couple of strikes on carpet so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the carpet below my workbench here okay so here's my hollow punch and I'm just gonna the dart head stuck inside of it so I'll just press it out real fast here Okay, here is our finished dart head. Now as you can see, there's the felt backing. And <clears throat> the, other, the thing I didn't cover in this video was um, getting your foam baker rod, which you use for the body of the dart, and cutting it into foam blanks. Now there's a lot of other videos on YouTube about this, so I didn't really want to cover it. Um, but basically, my next step would just be to uh, take this this gumdrop head and apply some plumber's goop uh, it's the glue I use to the felt portion of the dart head and then just go ahead and glue that to my foam blank and then I'd wait about 24 hours for full adhesion uh, typically it dries quicker but you know the uh, the packaging says 24 hours so well, anyways, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys try this out. If you're interested, definitely give it a try. It's so much fun. You can personalize these darts a lot more, and there's just so many benefits. They're a lot more safe than typical homemade darts. So uh, thanks for watching. Drop any questions you have in the comments, and we'll see you guys later.